Hi everybody, it's Sherry at The Crafty Decorator. I hope you're all still having a fantastic Friday. Um, I am going to show you all how to make the pumpkin stem. Since we did, well, since I did last night, I jumped on and showed you my little jello mold pumpkins I was working on and I showed the stems. Well, since I did that, I guess a lot of new followers are asking, how do we make the stem? And I keep sending them to the live video we did of when we made the pumpkins out of the peat pots. So a follower suggested I make a video just for the stem. She said it would be much easier and she's right. So you wouldn't have to go skimming through the whole video just to find the stem. So that's what I'm going to do. So I am not live, guys. This is pre-recorded to make it easier for everyone to figure out how to make, well, to find how to figure out how to make the stem. So these are all different stems. You're going to decide what stems you want. I'm going to show you the process on how to make a stem, and then you're going to need to decide how thick you're going to want it, how thin, how long. Um, see, like this one's thicker. That one's shorter or thinner. I'm sorry. So here's how you're going to start. Sissel. You're going to need sissel. I buy my sissel at Walmart. I find it in the aisles where the tools and the screws are and stuff. It's kind of cheap, guys. It's only like, I think it's $7 or something like that for the big roll. It's cheaper than Amazon because I was searching for a girl one night she sent me a picture from Amazon and said, is this the sisal you use? And I looked it up on Walmart and it was the same like thickness and stuff. And it was so much cheaper on Walmart. And I think you got more. So go to Walmart for sisal. Okay, so what you're going to decide is how long you want your stem. And if you want curve or twist or whatever you want. I am just going to cut a piece of stem sisal and two pieces i'm going to show you what two pieces of sisal will look like because out of two pieces you get a lot of little pieces because what you want to do is take one of your sisal pieces twist it a little on the top don't mind my hands guys i've been like making some stems twist it on the top to separate three so now you have into three do that with your second piece. You're going to separate it into three. There you go. So now you have six pieces. Now you're going to want to turn the six pieces into 18 pieces. By doing that, you have to separate each one of these into three more pieces. So your two pieces are going to turn into 18 pieces. See? See? Separate your six pieces. Now, I am not going to stand here and separate all six in front of you. Okay. I'm just wanting you to make sure you see, you understand what we're doing. So, you start it with two pieces of sisal. You separated the two pieces into six. Now, you're separating the six pieces into 18 pieces. Well, strands. I should say strands. Okay, so after you have your 18 pieces, this is like 18 pieces right here. Try to line them up at least on one end so they're kind of even. They don't have to be perfect, but just so you're kind of even because we're going to glue these together. And you don't want any short and long in the middle. Okay. So there we go. So now I kind of lined up my eight. They're not perfect, but they're kind of lined up. All right. You're going to want to leave some of this on the bottom, unglued. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take my pumpkin apart here. Because see, like when I was making the one for this pumpkin, I thought, okay, I need enough so it's going to go flat on the bottom. You don't need a ton, but just enough so it's going to open up so you can glue it. All right, so that's what I want right there. Now you're gonna take your hot glue gun and we are gonna glue all of these together. So what you're gonna wanna do is just add 
I want to make sure I'm in the camera. Just a little bit of hot glue in there. And then you're going to twist it. And you're going to hold it for a couple seconds till the glue like sets up so it just don't spring open when you let it go. You might have to go back and add some more glue. Like I needed a little tighter on the bottom here. I don't want that much loose. So I'm adding a little more. See, I'm leaving that loose. I could trim this down if I left a little too much. But, okay. Now you're just gonna go in and add some more hot glue and twist. And you're just gonna keep doing this all the way up. What is everyone doing today? It's beautiful here today. Okay, add. I have been working on, and twist, um, our craft for tomorrow. I finally made up my mind what I was doing. Um, I'll try to, hopefully, maybe tonight, put a list on of what I'm going to be using. And tomorrow, I hope to show you what we're going to be making. Um, I'm in the midst of making one so far. Because you know me, I'm always like looking at it and changing it. I don't know how to leave stuff alone. Um, right now it's outside drying. And I wanted to try to make two sizes of it. I don't know if I should do two separate lives. Because I don't want to keep these on forever. I'm afraid people get bored just like I am now. Okay. So here you are. That's how. That's what you end up with after you get it glued together. Now, if you think it's loose anywhere, you can add more glue. Let me move my pumpkin out of the way here. Okay, now you're gonna want Maj Podge. Maj Podge, right here. This is like, I've been going through a ton of this stuff. You're gonna wanna cover this stem in Maj Podge. You don't need a whole, whole ton. Whoops but you want enough because we're gonna cover it with cinnamon. So you wanna make sure you get enough on there. Plus this helps hold your um, sisal all together. And don't worry about like the little pieces sticking out or anything because that makes it look more natural. Okay, let's see, I gotta add, add it to the bottom too even though that's what we're gonna lay flat to glue to the pumpkin, my glass pumpkin, that's okay. Cause we could spread it out even when it's dry. All right, now you got your Maj Podge on there. See how I have it covered in Maj Podge? Now, let me get my cinnamon plate. Now we're gonna wanna sprinkle this with cinnamon. So you sprinkle it all up. This is my craft cinnamon. I ordered like bags and bags of cinnamon once off of um, eBay. It was even before Etsy was out. It was just eBay and uh, I ordered bags of it. And there's like a whole ton still closed. But I do use a lot of cinnamon because that's what I use in my coffee staining mixture. Okay, so this is what you look like now. Now we have to let this dry. So you're gonna wanna set it aside and let it dry. Then once it's dry, let me empty my cinnamon back in there. Let's see. I wanna make sure I have a dry one because I was doing these before I came on with yours. Okay, once it's dry, you love, voila, you have this is hard. See? Now you're gonna take a clean brush. This is just like a paintbrush from the dollar store. And you're gonna brush off your excess cinnamon because you don't want a ton. You want it sort of like different colored in variation to make it look more real. Oh, I should maybe, you can bend this now. I should show you that. So if you wanna bend it and you can bend it again later when it gets hard, but I usually just start giving it a little bend, see? Now I'll let that dry. Okay, so now you brushed off your excess cinnamon. Now you are gonna need 
another coat. I'm going to set that on that plate. You will need another coat of Mosh Posh on here. One more coat. That's all you need. So brush it on again, right on top of your cinnamon there. Oh, I should have got a little cup. I usually pour it, my Mosh Posh, into a little cup because you're brushing this and it's got cinnamon on it. So you get a little cinnamon on your brush and then you're sticking it back in your Mosh Posh. So I suggest using a little cup to pour some of your Mod Podge in so you don't get the cinnamon all in there. But this one's almost empty, so that's okay. I've been going through a lot of Mod Podge. I just bought another one, and I usually buy them at the craft store with a coupon because I love coupons, guys. I usually don't pay anything for a full price unless I'm desperate. And I was at Walmart, and I didn't feel like going to the craft store, so I bought a new one at Walmart. But I usually buy them at the craft store, like Michael's. I don't think Hobby Lobby carries the real big one. Michael's or Joanne's and use a coupon. Okay. So now you coated it again. See? And you can really bend this again if you want to. You can keep it. It kind of stays good. All right. Now you have to let that dry. Then once that is dry... Your stems are going to be hard. I don't know if you can hear that. Hear how hard they are? Your stems are like this. Any twists that you made, any bends that you made. And actually, I think you can probably still bend them. So you could still bend them after they get hard. You just keep bending it. Look. But you decide what you want to, how thick, how long. Um, let me look at that one again. But this is like how thick. Let's see. This is like how thick it's going to be with two pieces of your sisal separated. That's, that's how thick it's going to be. So to me that, I think, let's see. I want to make sure I got the right right thickness of the one that I use for two. This one, I believe, is three. I believe this is three pieces of sisal. That one. And this one is two. Like I separated them into the 18, 18 strands. All right, so that is how you make your stems, guys. And then you just glue them with hot glue. Uh, I'm trying to see if I had another one dry. This one is dry. I didn't put the second coat on it yet. But see how this is on the bottom? So that is how you're going to want to glue, like on top of something. Unless when we did the pumpkin pea pots, these little guys, I just poked a hole in there and stuck it in and glued around it. Aren't the pea pots cute, the pumpkins? Okay, I still didn't finish those yet, guys. I have so many unfinished projects. But this is what it looks like. This still needs a coat of Maj Posh on there. I should throw it on there. See? So that's how you make your stems. I, if you have any questions, just message me. Um, but they are pretty simple. They're very simple. And they look so real on your pumpkins. You can use a stick, yes, if you don't want to make these. But, God, I just think those are so cool looking. All right, guys. I kept you on here long enough. I hope you understand how to make these. If you have any questions, just message me. I'll talk to you all later, and I'll post what we're going to be, um, you're going to need tomorrow to make our craft. I'll talk to you all later. Thanks. Bye.